They say when you take a picture of someone, you capture their soul in the camera. They also say if you print it off, the picture contains the soul itself, and you can control them with it. I'm not sure where to start. Uh, do you know what the primordial soup is? A veritable ocean of elements, all floating around randomly. And through millions of years of time, eventually the right set of random circumstances come to pass, and the elements were able to connect together and form the world's first single-cell organism. Now, that's a really boiled-down version of it, but I'm sure you get the gist of it. Fast forward a few billion years to the early 1990s, when internet use began to rapidly accelerate. Every home had a computer, and new connections between computers were opening on a by-the-second basis. Trillions of bytes of data began to transfer around the world at the speed of light, music, text, sound, and most importantly, pictures. Now if, when you take a picture of someone and capture their soul, what happens when that picture is converted to data and placed on a hard drive? Does the soul follow? Well, Fifteen years later, we believe so. We believe that when you take a picture of someone and upload it onto your computer, alongside the image data uh, blueprint of the person's soul itself, is imprinted on that file. Look at your pictures folder. How many souls reside in that folder alone? And that's just the beginning, though. These soul blueprints each retain pieces of a puzzle, parts of the soul itself. Recently, a group of hackers who referred to themselves as the Cardinals took an interest in this theory and began experiments. They found anomalies within the binary sequences of images based on similar features of the person they had taken a picture of. A binary DNA, if you will. Now, these hackers had come to possess a set of three extremely important data files, one AVI, one JPEG, one MP3 each of which possessing interesting, unexplainable qualities. The first, Cradle.avi, depicts what appears to be a group of teenagers with a low-quality video camera exploring the basement of a house. The quality of the video is distorted completely, beyond any comprehensibility, and the video is very low quality. For most of the video, the camera is passed around the group, handed back and forth, and jerked around too much to make anything noticeable out. But near the end, the camera turns at an odd angle, and you can semi-clearly make out a young girl standing in the corner, facing the wall. Her hair is long and black, and she's wearing some form of white dress. You only see her for a split second, but many people who've seen the video claim that there just seems something wrong with her. A bit deformed, but not in a way anyone can explain. But the truly peculiar property of this video is what happens to the user's computer at the end of it. On the last second of the video, if not already so, the video will force full screen itself. Along with this, you're left with a one second looping clip of a window on a wall. It loops 15 times, and then the girl is seen again, standing on the other side of the window with her back to the viewer slowly wavering back and forth. After a few moments, the video ends and the user's computer permanently shuts down. Inspection has shown that the entire registry becomes completely corrupt, requiring the user to do a total wipe and reinstall. The second file is known as needles.mp3. This sound file, when played, plays for about three minutes. It's extremely distorted. One can occasionally make out some form of vocal talking, but most of the sound is some form of growling, rolling, cracked roar. Users who listen to the file often experience extreme nausea and loss of balance for a brief period of time. The final file, 
is known as burningman.jpg. The file name has nothing to do with what the actual picture depicts. Instead, it just displays a haphazard mess of overlaid and meshed images of dolls and hallways. There also seems to be an image of a man standing with his head cast down in the background, but the image is too distorted to make anything out, much like the other files. The image, when downloaded and open on a user's desktop, will proceed to stay permanently open on whatever program it's open through. Not only that, the program becomes disabled. Nothing else happens. The image just permanently sits there on your desktop, unclickable, unminimizable, and you're just left there with the man's invisible gaze staring at you. From what the group of hackers were able to discern, this file seems to have pre-compiled into the data something along the lines of CMDOW. Yet, as complex and intricate as the program is, it works across all OS platforms. No one knows who the original creator is. In fact, few people have heard of it, as the file is uncopyable, nor sendable. This, in fact, further adds to the mystery as often receivers of the file will obtain it from random anonymous emails, posted on forums on a download link, or posing the question, how was that poster able to upload it? If you ever see any of these files, refrain from downloading any of them. They all have varying detrimental effects on your computer, from practically taking out your whole registry, corrupting System 32, freezing your mouse, or crashing your computer. Now onwards, this group of hackers, the Cardinals, took to analyzing these three files, comparing their odd behaviors. They had heard of other such odd file names, image, data, etc., but were never able to get their hands on them. At least, as far as we know, though rumor states they, in fact, were able to locate and collect all of the known files like the original smile.jpg, barbie.jpg, even suicidemouse.avi. Not even the grifter was able to escape their grasp, rumor states. But rumor also states the grifter video even exists. But that's another story. Nonetheless, all these files in hand... The group lined the files up and began to meticulously walk through the binary, one at a time. One, zero, and one at a time. Checking for similar strains and series of binary that matched. And they did manage to successfully do so. At least legend states. The result were seven individual executable files that did nothing simply a gibberish pile of zeros and ones. They endlessly puzzled over the files, each tackling and executable each. They decided to name them after themselves. Lust, gluttony, greed, envy, sloth, wrath, and pride. At, at last, they attempted to line the files up. Remarkably, something odd happened. The copies of the files quite suddenly meshed together. The result was a single, complete executable file, already named barelybreathing.exe. And what of this file? Well, not much else is known after that point. They were too smart to just execute it. They analyzed the file every possible way, hex, binary, conversations, anything to figure out what this odd file would do, to no avail. Even after forming together, it was an even bigger jumble of ones and zeros and made no more sense than the separate executables. They backed the file up on a flash drive and proceeded to run it. That was the last command found on any of their destroyed computers a week later. Their corpses had been disfigured beyond recognition. Descriptions of the corpses stated 
that it almost seemed as if they had been brutally slashed across their faces and arms. Every square inch of skin that had been bare had been mutilated, almost microwaved, and then sliced repeatedly by a micro-thin razor. The government attempted to hush up the event, but there was some media leakage, and because the Cardinals had been keeping a blog among themselves and a few close friends, it's closed down and deleted now, so don't go trying to find it. It quickly spread out, as per what they had been attempting to accomplish. And if it was, or was not, related to their terrible deaths. And what of the flash drive? Hmm. A friend who knew of its existence later checked the home of the group and was unable to find it. According to reports, the drive was found in the pocket of one of the group, and had been taken into custody by the police, and then simply vanished. The trail continues on. Far more, though. The file resurfaces every few weeks, all around the globe. Governments attempt to cover it up, but some media leaks out, of course. Look to the news for people mutilated in their homes by a murderer their computer stolen, etc. And if you ever get a cryptic email with an attachment labeled barelybreathing.exe, for fuck's sake, don't open it.